any Potterhead knows that despite Harry Potter being one of the most popular Gryffindors of all time, he did come rather close to getting sorted into the same house as he who must not be named. And if this got you thinking how the Harry Potter books would have turned out had he been sorted into the most misunderstood Hogwarts house, then you've come to the right place. Welcome to The Bestest, the channel that provides you the bestest news and videos you should know about. On our previous episode, we talked about what would happen during Harry's first three years at Hogwarts had he been sorted into Slytherin. Today, we will continue this fanfic story of the boy who lived and see what would happen to him on his fourth to seventh year. Before we start, make sure to like and subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell for more amazing videos. Okay, let's just do a quick recap of the first three books in this alternate HP universe. In book one, we have a very unhappy Draco who'd feel the need to establish his authority and pressure Harry into forgetting about becoming friends with Ron or Hermione. Snape and Harry's relationship would take an even more complicated turn. He'd still let Harry into the Quidditch team and wouldn't take as many points off of him, but would probably still look for other ways to punish Harry. Harry wouldn't have too many true friends, so although he'd find the mirror of Eri set, he wouldn't find out about Quirrell's plans to retrieve the Sorcerer's Stone for you-know-who. Quirrell still won't be able to get the stone, but that also means he'd still be alive and would be able to come back for year two. Because Quirrell is still alive, Voldemort could give him the diary, which would then transfer all of Quirrell's life force and whatever's left of Voldemort's soul into young Tom Riddle. There'd be no need to open the Chamber of Secrets or get Ginny involved, but there'd also be no Dobby warning Harry of the Chamber, so Dobby will remain as the Malfoy's house elf. You know who would rise again without anyone even noticing. With Harry's scar hurting more and more frequently, Hermione's curiosity will lead to the slow beginnings of the trio's friendship. Come year three, Harry, Ron, and Hermione would already be friends, though not as close as they are in the original books. This means Fred and George wouldn't give Harry the Marauder's Map, so he wouldn't see Pettigrew and tell Lupin about it. Sirius Black would still see Scabbers in the Daily Prophet and escape Azkaban because of this. Without Harry and his friends intervening, Buckbeak will be executed. Sirius and Lupin would end up killing Pettigrew, and Sirius would be declared a free man. But even with Pettigrew gone, at this point, the Dark Lord would have already regained his strength and rounded up some of his most loyal followers. Alright, now that we've all caught up, let's see what happens next on Harry's fourth year as a Slytherin. Now that he's a free man, Sirius Black would bring Harry to the Quidditch World Cup over the summer. Because Sirius is good friends with the Weasleys, Harry would end up camping with them and Hermione, and the World Cup would end without Death Eaters attacking those in attendance. Voldemort, who already has a body, wouldn't need Barty Crouch to impersonate Mad-Eye Moody just to get Harry's blood. The real Alistair Moody would become the new defense against the Dark Arts teacher, and no one would put Harry's name into the Goblet of Fire. Cedric would survive the Triwizard Tournament, and Harry would never be romantically involved with Cho. It's difficult to tell who would have won the Triwizard Cup, as there wouldn't be anyone messing with the final obstacle just to get Harry to the port key. Harry's friendship with Ron and Hermione would finally start to grow. At this point too, Harry would already realize that his internal conflict about being in Slytherin was misplaced. He'd realize that being in Slytherin doesn't necessarily make you evil, and now that he's friends with people from other houses, they'd start understanding the same thing. The House of Green and Silver wouldn't be portrayed as badly as it was, and it would give credence to the notion that Slytherins who turned bad may not have been born evil after all, but were products of their environments. So you have things looking great for Harry and his friends. Cedric Diggory wouldn't have to die, 
and Slytherin's bad reputation would slowly be put to rest too. But in the shadows, Voldemort is carefully planning his assault of the wizarding world. The book would end with news of more and more people going missing, just as they did back in the days of the Dark Lord. Rumors of his return would inevitably start to spread, but the Ministry of Magic, as usual, would just quickly hush the rumors and assure everybody that the wizarding world has nothing to fear. On his fourth year, Harry's scar would constantly hurt as Voldemort starts messing with his head and putting visions into it. Voldemort would set off to retrieve the prophecy and with two years to build his forces, he'd have a huge advantage. Harry would confide in Dumbledore about his scar and the visions, and Dumbledore would then reveal that he has known all along that Voldemort has returned to power. He would still have Snape act as a double agent, and the Order of the Phoenix would have reassembled in secret. They tried to alert the Ministry of Voldemort's return, which Fudge would continue to ignore because he is under the false assumption that this was all but a ploy for Dumbledore to overthrow him, Fudge still sends Umbridge to Hogwarts. She wouldn't be bullying Harry as much, but she would continue to prevent the students from learning how to actually defend themselves against the dark arts. Because he knows that Voldemort has indeed returned, Harry would start Dumbledore's army. Cedric would also be around to help them learn more spells. At this point, Harry would take his focus off of Cho and would start to notice Jamie more. Voldemort would plant the vision of Sirius in Harry's head, and he would run off to the Ministry along with those they trained under Dumbledore's army. The battle at the Ministry would happen as it originally did and, unfortunately, Sirius would be killed by Billiatrix. Voldemort's return would finally be made public. Year 6 would be rather uneasy for Harry as tensions grow between him and some of his fellow Slytherins whose parents are Death Eaters. Harry would still find the Half-Blood Princess Potion book and without Ginny and Hermione to tell him otherwise, he'd be able to explore it in more detail. Draco would still be assigned the task of assassinating Dumbledore but would be unsuccessful in his attempts, with Harry keeping a close eye on him. This would lead to a confrontation between the two rivals, and Harry would test out the Half-Blood Prince's Sectus Sempra spell on Draco. Snape would heal Draco, but would then put Harry in detention for the rest of the year. Book 6 would end with Dumbledore still getting killed by Snape. Snape would reveal to Harry that he is the Half-Blood Prince, and after having killed Dumbledore, would gain the trust of the Death Eaters and the Dark Lord just as Dumbledore had planned. Now that Voldemort has launched a full-scale war, Harry would not be returning to school. With the Dark Lord looking to ruin the world, much of what happened in the original book would be as it was. Just like in the original story, Harry would go hunting for the remaining Horcruxes with Ron and Hermione by his side. Despite their friendship, Harry wouldn't entrust any of the Horcruxes with anyone, so Ron wouldn't wear Salazar's Slytherin's locket and wouldn't leave them. Not much would change except that Harry would have more Slytherin supporters. The Battle of Hogwarts would happen, and the final showdown between the two Slytherins would have Harry emerging as the victor. The Dark Lord would finally meet his end at the hands of the boy who lived. What other significant changes do you think would have happened if only Harry Potter were sorted into Slytherin? Tell us about it in the comment section below. And if you like this video, make sure to check out our other pop culture what if videos. Like this video on the most intriguing anime fusion crossovers that never really happened, but are fun to imagine nonetheless. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the bestest, and make sure to hit the bell to access more of our videos. Thank you so much for watching, and until our next bestest video.